on today's episode, we continue getting the car ready for the track. Just real quick here, I wanted to show you an illustration that I just finished up. Uh, a guy named Fraser uh, from Scotland got a hold of us through Instagram and uh, sent me some pictures of his car. We do custom illustrations for your car. Just message us and we'll talk about it. So out at the car, and the first thing that we're gonna be doing today is pulling the check engine light codes, or code rather, out of the car. And we're gonna be doing that using this little service port that's located near the ECU. So as you see, I've already went and taken out the glove box just to make this easier for the video. But there's this little port that you can find up behind the dash piece here. And it has this little green connector. And inside the green connector are these two little gray service ports. As you guys have heard me say many times already, I am not a mechanic, okay? So please don't scream at me if you feel I should know something and you know it and you're like, oh my God, like I'm learning, okay? So bear with me. But on these OBD1 cars, uh, there is this ECU port that you can take out and you know, people will use the scanners to go ahead and scan the ECU for any check engine codes that it's throwing. Well, on the OBD ones, OBD1 ones, you can actually use this method using a paper clip to short out the circuit. It essentially closes the circuit, so I'm not quite sure exactly what goes on in there, but it closes the circuit. You can actually start reading the codes through the check engine light blinking on the dash. Now, I know that sounds so weird, but that's the way it is. Uh, Honda built that in. I didn't know about this, so I wanna thank uh, my friend Juan, who you all saw in the other episodes, for telling me about it, and his friend Dusan for explaining it to him over the phone while he was here. <laughs> so at the service port, and you'll see the one that we pulled out of this green piece here, uh, the one that you need to work with is the plug that has this brown and green and white striped wire. There are two of them in here, you'll see, and one of them has this blue and then a green and white striped wire. We are working with the brown and green white striped wire. Hope that makes sense, but just visually look at it. So you take your paper clip and you literally just go ahead and short this circuit out by plugging it in to these two holes and leave it sticking out like that. Got my key, I don't know if y'all see this here too. If you've heard of Effect Apparel, very cool little keychain that they sent me for my car. Might be having some things in the works with those guys. So uh, maybe some updates on that soon. But we go ahead and get in the car and I'm gonna go ahead and click it over so that you can see the check engine light start blinking. Now, real quickly before I turn this over for you, the check engine light is going to start blinking. There are going to be a series of long flashes and then quick flashes for the check engine light. Now, the long flashes represent the first number of the trouble code that it's throwing. So for example, maybe it'll do one, two, three, four flashes. First number is a four. The second bit of flashes where it goes quicker, like say one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, uh, 46 is what the number comes up to be. So let's see what this is throwing. So getting ready to turn the power over. Okay, so you see it's starting to blink there. Let it cycle through. Here we go again. One, two, three, four, one, one. So 41. Let's go through one more time. One, two, three, four long blinks and one short blink. So 41. It read 41. Four long blinks and then one short blink. Uh, so code 41 when you look it up and I'll provide you a list of all the codes right here.
41 when you look it up is the heated oxygen sensor heater. So essentially it's to do with the O2 sensor, which I already knew was a problem for this car because mine right now is still using the one wire, which is standard for a D15B8. But for the B7, uh, head and ECU, it uses the four wire. Go ahead and taking off that one wire now. Problem with the one wire, obviously, is there is a single wire that is coming off of the O2 sensor from the manifold. And you see here, up at the top, focus, this is the one wire plug up at the top. Now the four wire, this is off of a, a used car from the junkyard here. Four wire obviously has the four wires, duh, right? But you see them together, they are not going to plug up the same way. I am a bit confused on what to do at the moment. The four wire and the one wire O2 sensors obviously are not going to play together. The one wire O2 sensor is still within my Civic's harness, the engine harness. So that has the one wire connector coming out. The four wire, which I need for the B7, isn't gonna just plug into it. I understand, you know, I could go get the four wire connection out of another harness and put that in here, but I personally don't know how to do that, like I said. So I'm gonna have to be finding someone to help me with that. Maybe it's a simple process. You know, I've just never done anything like that. I'm gonna be looking into it. That needs to get resolved because it is still throwing the check engine light and that is the final light. And I believe that's still putting the car into limp mode. Correct me if I'm wrong. So I need to take care of that. That'll have to wait a minute. But for now, I'm gonna be turning on the car uh, because as you saw in the last episode, I did the coolant exchange. I wanna go ahead and turn it on, try to get it up to temperature, and see if the temperature gauge will hold. The thermostat job was success. The car is holding normal operating temperature, and that is very good. So that was freaking delicious. Had to make a pit stop at five guys, I was getting hungry. And I don't go there too often, but holy crap, when I do, they never disappoint double cheeseburger fries because I'm a man double cheeseburger all the way except no grilled onions I don't like the grilled I like the raw onion and then no mushrooms because eh, that doesn't have a place on a burger in my mind but oh my god so delicious so I'm getting ready to head back to the house now I'm gonna maybe include a little bit more like uh, just my everyday kind of stuff, you know. I don't know if uh, y'all would dig that or not. Um, if you think it's cool, uh, rad. I would like to, uh, you know, show you a bit more. But uh, if you hate it, I won't do it either. So let me know. Back home, what I'm gonna do to kind of wrap up this episode. Unfortunately, the O2 wire is gonna be what it is right now. From what it's looking like, you kind of just have to replace the whole harness to get the four wire O2 in there. Maybe some like re-splicing of wires can happen. I don't know, you tell me. It might be another trip to the junkyard if I want this thing working properly, which I do because it's only revving up to 5,500 and I don't know if that's technically considered limp mode, but I know it's supposed to be able to go to 65. And it did that before when you all saw Juan and I driving it in a previous episode. All we had done then was disconnect the battery and let it sit for a sec and then plug it back in and you know start the car. So the, the ECU is recycling itself. So that's what I'm gonna do again. I want you guys and for myself to be able to just see that it can rev up to 6,500 
before it redlines, it will do it, that me clearing that check engine code will be worth that trouble. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect that battery right now, and then we will go for a little test drive, make sure the thermostat, everything with that is still working properly, and then that will tell me if I want to go ahead and tackle changing out this harness. So let's do that. Okay, so the battery just connected and I am going to be checking the coolant level because the car, the fan has turned on, the engine has cycled. It looks like it's still pretty much there at the top. Well, maybe a little low, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit. Let's see about the reserve. Come in. That looks to be definitely down. So I'm gonna put a little bit more in. Coolant is all topped off, reservoir topped off, bleeder valve closed. Just gonna put the battery back on and I'm gonna tighten that down and then we're gonna go. Just getting the temperature up to normal operating temp. Doing that just fine. So we're just gonna go cruise around. I'm gonna step on the throttle and uh, we'll hopefully see it go up to 6,500. him from a previous episode. He is here to help me out and figure out this O2 situation. Um, we have come up with a plan and I'll have one talk about it right now. First we got the right O2 with the four wire on it. We got the male plug. So we got the female plug from another uh, EG. And the idea is, is to just have these two guys connect to each other. And then we're gonna run back the three wires that don't have a spot yet on the ECU chip, I mean on the ECU plug. And we wanna de pin those wires out and extend these to the ECU and pin those in. Um, and that's pretty much the game plan. Right now we just have to figure out how to get the old two, the old O2 out of there. Yeah, that thing is like stuck on there, man. Um, and then so, we got some other clips too, just in case plan A doesn't work, then hopefully we don't have to. Run more wires. Yeah. But essentially, we're just running these wires alongside the harness back to the ECU and plugging in the pins that nothing is in there right now. Yeah. We're just plugging in the four wires. There now. should be three spots available. Hopefully, that's uh, that's what we're gonna go for. The white one should already be in there because it does have an O2 sensor now. Right. This is the single wire O2 that's in there. If you all see that. So uh, that's the plan, we're gonna get started. Juan has come up with the plan. We uh, are using this 
uh, harness that he brought from the four wire. You see we got the bare wire exposed and we've already clipped the back parts here. We're gonna run it into the harness. This harness that came with the car actually already has all of these wires. They're just not connected to anything when it goes into the harness that connects up to the engine. So we're just splicing in these wires. Um, Juan is gonna be cutting into this wire and then uh, we're gonna connect it all up. We got the manifold down here. This is the O2. This is a 22 deep socket that is gonna fit on there and take this off. We're gonna try it with the gun. See if we can blast this sucker off. Yes! So here is the new O2 sensor, four wire, new connection. I'm putting that guy back in the manifold here while it's still out. Obviously you don't have to take out the manifold to do this, but it really is like super awkward to put these things in while they are in the car. And it really made it so much easier for us to do it this way. One over here messing with the tape first. We got the three wires hooked up. This is what Juan has done up so far. We've got the newer connection here, three wires. We're just using the electrical tape right now just to make sure that we've got things run correctly. Uh, he's gonna be using the white wire. Sorry, I don't know if you can see that, but the white wire from the existing plug that was already down there. And we're just gonna run it with this. Uh, right now Juan is actually just using this ground that was already here. You guys probably remember that from the thermostat episode. It was just hanging off. So we're using that ground to actually connect the ground for the new O2 wire. So that worked out great. We're ready to start the car. Uh, Juan went ahead and connected all the wires for the four wire O2. He added three wires to the harness that was already with the car. Those wires were already there, connected into the ECU. We just had to run them to run the proper four wire O2 instead of the one wire. I'm gonna turn the car on now. Juan is standing up front in case anything catches fire. <laughs> Be ready to turn it off. Yeah, be ready to turn it off. And uh, we'll go ahead and see if the check engine light comes on. We're thinking there may still be something we have to do. We'll, we'll update you on that. So you thought you were gonna see the car start there. I figured I didn't need to show you because it still is just revving to 5,500. Check engine light was still on. And Juan actually came up with, he thinks, and I believe him, that this wiring harness was actually already changed out. The wiring harness that's in the car and running through the firewall is still the B8 wire harness, but then when they, the people I bought it from, did the B7 head swap, they must have went ahead and changed out the wire harness in the engine bay. So it might not be from a DA. The colors of the wiring harnesses are not matching up perfectly, and that started to tip Juan off into thinking this, and he seems pretty solid on this idea now. So I'm pretty sure what you all are gonna be seeing coming up is us pulling a wire harness because even when I go do the engine swap, it still is going to need to be a proper harness. Thank you all for watching. I'll talk to you in the comments. If you have any ideas of your own, please let me know. Juan, thank you so much for your help, man. I sincerely appreciate you. You're a good friend and I loved hanging out with you. Thank you all for watching. Thank you.